everyone and welcome back to Massalia Tales. In the previous episode, we most importantly started a war with the Iceni clan in Britannia. We already have a foothold in Britannia, but now there's an all-out war for the whole thing. First, we engaged their fleet, which was suspiciously hanging out outside my docks. It was a chaotic naval battle in which the enemy's superior ships did some damage to our fleet, but our massive numerical advantage allowed us to win out in the end. Then the main fight began. We set up ambushes to try and stop the Iceni from reaching our lines. Those ambushes failed and now we're fighting a battle where the enemy has a massive advantage to defend our settlement Iska. The first order of business was to try and defeat the enemy's massive skirmish advantage, which we eventually did by landing our fleet and rear-attacking their skirmish position. The rest of the enemy's heavy troops are just forcing their way into the town, gradually killing all of the garrison troops who are fighting desperately to stop them getting inside, but were losing men fast. Heraclades is conducting a massive rear-attack to try and stop them, but so far it hasn't been successful. The Massalian trade networks had increased in profitability dramatically as the influx of slaves from Britain, Mesopotamia and the Black Sea had made ships significantly cheaper to crew. But with this boon came a dependence. Now the pressure from the merchantile sectors of the cities was to make sure slaves were always available, a pressure that made a necessity of war. These demands were likely a part of what drove the Timukoi to trigger a war in Britannia. If the Iceni could be subjugated, the bounty of slaves available would ensure Massalian dominance for years to come. And it would make Cretheus' campaign seem yet more distant, yet more of a drain on resources. For ambitious politicians, the chance to injure Cretheus was irresistible. We're back into the battle at Isca, where Heraclades' forces are making a rear attack on the massive Iceni horde, and now he's being backed up by the arrival of all the naval forces who landed earlier in the battle. A lot of them are javelineers who still have some ammunition and are using that ammo to pound the enemy forces nearby. But it's not going to make a massive difference, of course, because we only have one or two shots left on the units that don't have anything at all. The main fight is being conducted by Heraclides' legionaries, elite soldiers fighting against the enemy, but the enemy are elite as well. We're probably killing more of them than we're losing, but even if every one of my legionaries can take down two of the enemy, that's not going to be enough because the enemy have a gigantic numerical advantage. Far away from that battle, we've got other minor skirmishes going on. Here you can see I sent some shock cavalry to chase an enemy skirmish unit away from the battle, but unfortunately I lost track of it and didn't realise it's actually chased them right to where the enemy's reinforcements are coming in. So now they're backed up by their friends. More skirmish units, a sword unit and a cavalry unit comes in to slam my unit from all sides. That unit of shock cav is very quickly lost. Further behind, my other unit of shock cav is having more luck. It managed to charge into an enemy skirmish unit, but you may remember the enemy skirmishers are actually a spear unit when they go into melee, and shock cavalry aren't very good at fighting hand to hand, so they're having some trouble. Heraclades himself coming in with heavy cavalry to help out in this instance, but overall, the shock cavalry not particularly helpful at getting rid of these skirmishers. You can see there's more spearmen coming in to reinforce. We can't keep that fight going for long. As for the main engagement, we've now at this stage lost one of the two units of Thorax Legionaries who are fighting against the enemy. One more is fighting in a weird formation, I think it rotated its lines while fighting, so it fights on its flanks. More of the naval crews have moved up here, the heavier swordsmen have arrived. Some of them have javelins as well, so they can throw them into the general direction of the enemy and may hope to score a few kills, but it's unlikely they're going to make a significant contribution to the fight. So it's up to my troops fighting in a glorious 10 or so frames per second against the enemy to win out somehow. The one unit still in there, I ordered them to go into hollow square formation, a formation that the Thorax Legionaries are uniquely trained in. They can use this when fighting on all sides to make sure none of their troops get outflanked and it boosts their stats as a result. And this is exactly the situation it's used for. You can see they're being attacked on all sides by the enemy who have them surrounded. The bulk of the enemy are actually not engaged there. They're just being attacked by a few of the light units but are totally surrounded by them. I can, of course, move up those uh, naval thorax swords who've arrived now. They'll be able to form a new line to go in and fight in that engagement. But I'm going to keep them out for now to keep them fresh. 
As my units are being defeated, we've got more units coming in. Two more Thorax Legionary squads enter the field and will now rush across to take part in the fight. My cavalry out there in the distance, totally gone at this point, as you can see there. So now a tiny bit later, more enemy reinforcements kept coming onto the field, including more Jav Cav, which is disastrous for us. We're totally weak against that unit. Here I'm using some uh, citizen militia, just a mob unit, to come and absorb the enemy's javelins, a heartless but necessary tactic to keep them away from the heavy infantry who they'll damage. Unfortunately, over here, the enemy notices me bringing these reinforcements in from the edge of the field and their Jav Cav come in to engage the legionaries. Luckily for me, though, they didn't actually throw their jabs as they came in. A couple of them throw at the last second, but actually they seem to want to fight me in melee, which is perfect because of course they are a skirmish cavalry unit and the legionaries specialize in melee. So yes, please come in and fight the legionaries. The other unit's going to ignore them and continue on towards the main fight. The enemy lose a few horsemen and then try to escape from the legionaries, but now the legionaries can give them a taste of their own medicine. A massive volley of javelins cuts their unit down, losing tons of horses as they escape from the legionaries there. So overall, that little skirmish went a lot better than it could have. Now back at the main fight, the mob are in huge trouble as they're getting cavalry charged on one flank by melee cavalry and Jav Cav are coming in to attack them from the front. Overall, they're doing a good job at distracting these units from my main position, but they are now lost and those Jav Cav and regular Cav are going to come in to get nice flanking positions on these Hoplites. Luckily, the enemy chose to engage the Hoplites even after I turned, so we're going to get a frontal fight with those Cav, which will do some damage. They'll actually come right back out though. They were very clever with their Cav never actually keeping them in melee and keep cycle charging my units. Meanwhile, some of the naval crew have moved in to take part in the fight. The hollow square that the legionaries had formed has broken down. The unit managed not to rout. Sometimes units of legionaries who are in hollow square will rout when they break it because it counts as a rear attack as they reform into their regular formation. I don't know what causes them to break it. I think if they're just under attack too heavily, they don't sustain the square. Anyway, behind that battle line, the two new units of legionaries have come in and are now defending my rear against the enemy's various attacks. The problem here is the enemy has absolutely tons of skirmishers and we don't really have anything to do about it. They're just pelting me with stones. Some of them are going to move in close and use javelins. All I can really do is close into the enemy's melee units and fight them so the enemy gets a little bit of friendly fire. They'll make things go a tiny bit better. You can see here the enemy's lighter cavalry went around my unit after they were distracted by some painted warriors and started attacking my archers. Not a huge problem, they're out of ammunition archers and the loss of those guys actually allows reinforcements to come in, so not the end of the world. Heracleides, who was inspiring the men at the front line, had to come back to fight with his horsemen. I'm trying to keep Heracleides out of the fight at this stage because he's lost tons of men and the death of the man himself would be a crushing blow. Additional Jav Cav come into the fight here, this time being more clever. They're going to throw their Javs at a distance, actually fortunately for themselves, hitting my unit in the back as they were reforming. Luckily some routing archers <laughs> distract them and take the brunt of their attack so my legionaries aren't in too much trouble. Don't worry, I think everyone knows it. The only way off this battlefield is victory or death. But still, for most of the militia, they don't really keep that at the front of their mind. They're more concerned with staying alive just a few more seconds than making a blow against the enemy at the cost of their lives, even when their death is inescapable. Such is the difference between the mind of a man and that of a soldier. We shall not convince them otherwise unless we make the commitment. We give our lives to make the enemy suffer in any way we can. If everyone concentrates on the welfare of the enemy and forgets their own, then maybe, maybe there's a chance that a few men of Massalia will survive the day. Now let's jump inside the town where you'll remember we have all the garrison units trying to hold off against the enemy and unfortunately the enemy are doing quite well at breaking through. We've got various citizen militia hoplites, garrison hoplites and naval hoplites holding there but they're taking casualties quickly. The enemy cavalry, who Heracleides was engaging, were encircled by some hoplites, came around to fight them. Very nice, that cavalry unit easily routed in that situation but of course my hoplites did have to take losses presenting their rear to the enemy skirmishers. Now these enemy painted warriors are doing okay against my legionaries, not necessarily because they're better but because my legionaries have their flank facing the enemy skirmishers and this javelin unit in particular has moved in to do damage to me so we're taking a lot of casualties fighting this battle even though it should be a one-sided fight by very heavy infantry against their medium swords plus we have hoplites in there helping out as well. 
Now the enemy skirmishers are getting to be a bigger and bigger problem. Here you can see I'm bringing in more reinforcements, Thorax Hoplites, but they're being completely destroyed by the fact the enemy skirmishers are attacking them. Not many of the troops died on the way over, but now they almost all have low health, so the second that unit engages, its men will be killed really quickly. This is really annoying, so I decided to start a second phase in this battle of chasing skirmishers and trying to get rid of them. That of course meant that Heracles couldn't have his policy of just inspiring the troops and not getting killed. He had to charge out with his cavalry because he's one of the very few units I have that can actually do anything about this enemy skirmish attack. But at that moment, my round Ride of the Valkyries moment occurred because Heracles had some Britonic chariots and these guys come onto the field at this very moment. So what we're going to do is have the chariots charge down this hill into the battlefield and just run through all of the enemy skirmishes. I've got very high hopes for this. Meanwhile, Heracles and his own cavalry are managing to take out a few of the enemy. The enemy, of course, being uh, spearmen, will kill a few of my horsemen every time I do this, but slowly we're damaging them. Now the chariots come in, they rush all the way through this enemy unit, a devastating charge. You can see it knocks almost all of them down, but unfortunately they all get back up, most of them anyway. The actual casualties inflicted is pretty much nothing. It seems these chariots are too light. They can only uh, inflict negligible ca casualties sorry, on units when they attack. I thought it might have been a one-off, so I decided to ask them to charge through and hit all these other skirmish units. You can see even now more skirmish units are coming in to join the battle. We need to do something about them. So the chariots are going to at least get them to move out of the way. You can see they're making a unit with some of their javelins there, the enemy unit missing completely. And now we hit this unit on the flank. You see the chariots turn and move right up the flank, completely mowing down this light missile unit. But unfortunately, as you can see, it does pretty much nothing. How many men did it kill? I don't know. Perhaps five at the most. Overall, the uh, Ride of the Valkyries moment I was expecting was not there. The chariots do almost nothing to the enemy. They just distract them. Better than nothing, I guess, but I was expecting a lot more. A tiny bit later, when the chariots basically just rode back and forth, they started to get a bit bogged down because there were enemy units just everywhere. And unfortunately, the chariots aren't particularly strong when it comes to actually being attacked. An enemy javelin unit came in and threw a massive volley. It fell in amongst the melee where they were fighting with some spears, but unfortunately it seemed almost all of my chariots got hit. I think hits on the horses killed the charioteer as well in an inconvenient twist, and the unit was wiped out in the blink of an eye. So, the chariots, not very effective. <laughs> I was expecting quite a lot when they came onto the field, and they provided pretty much nothing. Although actually, perhaps they provided a sufficient distraction for me to use all of my other missile units to start fighting in melee. The, the operation at this stage was to send out all the javelin men and archers to fight in melee and at, at the very least just run at the enemy so that they would turn back and skirmish away from my heavy infantry. And where they do catch them, as you can see here, getting the enemy into melee is vital because then we can rear attack them with the few cavalry we do have. And at this stage, our cavalry contingent has expanded because the Celtic cavalry have now come in as reinforcements. We've got two extra cavalry units. That doesn't mean, though, that Heracles himself doesn't need to be out here. He's still, as you can see here, using his heavy cavalry to chase down and engage the enemy's slingers in melee, fighting against them as spearmen. Dangerous, but we're not going to do it much more. Heracles is still alive at this point. You might just about spot him. He has a red shield in there if you look extremely closely at that footage. The problem here was they javelined him with another cavalry unit of their own. He lost a lot of men, and it was at this point in the battle that my nerve for using Heracles in battle broke. I decided he wasn't going to fight anymore. I needed to get him out of that engagement, especially because it looked like he was about to be surrounded by cavalry there. Nearby, my plan of sending the skirmishers out is failing, as you can see, because the enemy skirmish units, even when they do stop to fight in melee, win. So if the cavalry aren't close by to follow up on the fact the enemy have stopped, it's not particularly useful. Still, with the two units of cavalry we've gained as reinforcements, we are now able to do decent damage to the enemy and start clearing them up. Meanwhile, though, back on the main fight in the town, things aren't going particularly well. Most of the actual heavy infantry are now dead. We're down to just a couple of Hoplite regiments, and we've got archers now plugging the gap. Not an ideal situation at all. The phalanx isn't really in a steadfast formation and the enemy are just beating us in a straight frontal assault. We're killing them of course, but they have so many men it's barely making a difference. On the other side, we've got tons of swordsmen, fresh swordsmen who've come in to fight with the enemy. 
We're inflicting casualties on the enemy at this point. You can see a few of their regiments have lost a decent amount of their troops, and many of the enemy and ourselves, I guess, are exhausted. So the fight's slowing down a little bit at this point. Heracleides has made it out alive, as you can see here, and is now just going to sit behind our troops to inspire them. He's the red shielded one here, absolutely covered in the enemy's blood, hopefully not his own, and at rallying his men as they fight, hoping to use his abilities and the presence of his morale aura to make that fight last a little bit longer. Far away from the town, my cavalry and skirmishers are really starting to clear up on the enemy, actually. At this point, all of the enemy's reinforcements are now on the field, so these skirmishers here were the last set to come on. So we were finally managing to actually get rid of the skirmishers. Even here, where some of my lower-grade missile ships fighting on melee, they're doing okay, miraculously. And when the Celtic cavalry come in to mop up the enemy as they're stuck, things go fine so very quickly we actually now dominate the outer part of the town we finally wiped the enemy out outside of the settlement and can move around as we please we're free and not being attacked by skirmishes the whole time a massive advantage we've won although a great sacrifice of our lesser troops the uh, bad news of course is that the enemy have actually broken through in the town as you can see i had one unit of legionaries who i swung around to come into the town through another entrance to hold them off and they arrived only just in time the enemy were already storming into the town as i arrived but we managed to catch some of them and lock them in melee again my unit not even doing very well against the enemy's infantry due to tiredness and the enemy's massive training advantage over us so they're going to try and hold on the rest of the hoplites and the archers fighting the line are gone but for this one regiment which is going to go very soon it's surrounded and its morale is dropping although at this stage finally we're starting to see some enemy rounds the enemy have been ground down just like we have we have been killing them despite the fact we've been losing mostly our own regiments and now they're finally starting to suffer consequences. The enemy have a super high level general, which I think is why none of their units routed until quite late in the battle like this. But finally, we're going to see some enemies killed and some of the units leaving, which will of course demoralize other units, but there's still plenty more to fight with. All those units freed up from fighting the skirmishes are going to come around to come into the town from another direction. They won't be able to do much good out there, but it's better than nothing, better than letting the enemy have free reign. And the arrival of reinforcement Peltas is going to make a really big difference in this fight now. The Peltas, of course, have a massive attacking power. They're going to shower javelins into the enemy. You can almost feel the frame rate increasing as the javelins hit because they're getting loads of kills here. Each Peltas regiment should kill one to 200 enemies and that is really going to thin the enemy out and the units that are already damaged and considering routing are going to get a lot closer to that breaking point because of the Peltas attack. So now the grind is going to start getting a little bit better for Massalia. I know that chant well, General. It's a war chant. They're calling upon the gods of this land to give them power. While they chant, they will not grow tired or scared and will fight as if the gods were watching every move. The only way to undo the effects of this chant is to chant even louder. Make it so that your own gods are the ones drawn to this battle instead of theirs. But they're too great in number for your men to achieve this. You must seek another path. You must distract the enemy from their song, making those who are not fighting too busy with some other task to talk to their gods. If I were you, General, I would release the dogs into the crowd. With wild beasts thrashing among them, not even a druid will keep his focus for long. Using a couple of Thorax Hoplite units that came in as reinforcements, I tried to open up a couple of new battlefronts, coming down the streets to the flank of the enemy's formation. Hoping to attack the enemy in the flank, of course, but actually, the enemy diverted their forces away from the main fight. You can see they've split them up so that they're fighting with both of my forces equally, none of their units being attacked in the flank. Another unit went right around the back of the enemy force. Unfortunately, because of it uh, trying to get round buildings, the formation broke up a little and it engaged in a slightly awkward way. Plus, of course, once it arrives, it has to contend with a massive numerical disadvantage. My troops are probably better than theirs, but their health is reduced and their formation is messed up, but they're still going to hold for a decent amount of time against the enemy's onslaught. So back at the main fight, the Peltists, who were doing damage to the enemy, now have fewer targets to aim at, unfortunately, but at least it means they can focus on the units that are there, inflicting lots of damage, and we start to finally see some of these enemy units routing out of the field for good, having lost almost all of their troops in some cases. We're supported by war dogs, who are sneaking onto the flank here to attack some of the enemy's lighter units. 
The War Dog's main priority is to kill routing units so they don't come back from routing. And I think at this moment you can see they're running off smelling some routing units over there in the corner. So they're going to go and take them down. But those War Dogs are going to come in very useful throughout the rest of this fight. Now at the back of the town, the legionaries I had uh, fighting the enemy there who'd gone around to engage from the rear were unfortunately defeated by the enemy and now rout away. And at this moment my light force has arrived from outside the town and set up a little line here. Not that it's going to do any good, the enemy could easily defeat them, but fortunately they decide to just stand and shout at them. It could be because the enemy is very tired, they decide not to attack at this moment. So they just sort of stand off, which is fine by me because it's keeping them out of the fight. I sent some pelters who are out of ammunition to go and try and support the spear units in the rear of the enemy's position, but unfortunately some routing units came back and blocked them in the streets. There are only some uh, lighter spear units, but my guys of course aren't melee specialists. The enemy probably had a slight advantage and they have about the same in terms of numbers, but because their numbers are split between two units, their morale will break faster, so it's not too bad. Now my cavalry, coming back in from the outside of town, were able to make a rear attack on the enemy here, hoping to support the spear unit as well. I expected this to actually do a fair bit of damage, but uh, it turns out it didn't really do anything. The enemy's troop count is still too high, and with all their morale buffs, uh, getting rear attacks, getting cavalry attacked, they don't really mind it. In fact, it's my cavalry who almost rout as a result of doing the cycle charge. Not good. It also attracts the attention of the enemy's general at this point, and that general's unit actually chases my cavalry all the way back out of the town. I didn't want to engage with the enemy's general because he's a very heavy melee unit, and my units are almost destroyed anyway. So things aren't going terribly well. We do, though, thanks to the arrival of the war dogs coming to the back of these light spear units attacking the pelters, manage to break them with most of the pelters still alive. So those war dogs have done good work there. The pelters can now continue on with their mission of getting further into the town, while the war dogs completely annihilate those two units, making sure they definitely won't come back again. So the Pelters are going to walk down the road. They're going to be actually held up by more routing units, so we're going to try and stop them, but uh, they'll kill their way to the support of our spearmen. Now at the main fight, the right flank, our right flank, has actually eased up a bit, and I'm able to advance my pikemen, turning around onto the flank of some of their really heavy infantry. The other unit's going to attack in the rear the men who are blockading the next street over. So this looks good, but of course it opens up a gap in my line, and the enemy seems to notice this immediately. We see some of the enemies fighting towards the centre of the town start charging back into this fight. So now my pikemen actually have their flanks exposed to these men, and the enemy are going to exploit it. The gap in between, I'm trying to fill it up with two squads of hoplites, but they're arriving too slowly. So a javelin attack and a melee attack comes against these pikemen. Their morale's quite good, so they hold, despite being exhausted. You wouldn't think they would like this uh, particular predicament of theirs, but they manage to hold, which is very useful. My hoplites rush to fill the gap. It seems I didn't gain an advantage from this breakthrough. Legionaries of Massalia, this is your moment. This is the time of sacrifice and success. Every one of you knows that the gods expect more of you than of ordinary men. A legionary is not just a warrior, they are a soldier, a gift from Ares to all mankind, a force to perfect the glorious acts of metal the gods dream of. Today we see a battle that will push on the courage of even the greatest of warriors. And that is why today, and only today, Will a show of valour and skill at arms guarantee you a place on Olympus? Abandon all thoughts of this life, for they matter not. Think of those mighty eyes that watch you, judge you, looking for bravery, for daring, for comradeship, for deadly blows and efforts beyond that of the ordinary man. Make the gods proud! Back where my light forces were set up at the back of the screen here, the enemy finally decide to make an attack out of the town, so they're mostly going to be attacking javelineers and archers, not exactly an ideal situation for me. I was considering just running away and trying to draw them out, but I did have some cavalry nearby, so I thought I might be able to set up some sort of uh, rear attack here if we can lock the enemy in place, but as you can see, my men actually break after just a couple of seconds in some cases. My men just aren't able to hold up against the enemy's super experienced melee units. But we're going to try anyway, we probably only have uh, less than a minute before all of this breaks down. My cavalry come in to make an attack, they unfortunately attack through one of my own routing units and don't do an enormous amount of damage in this attack on the side of this enemy unit. 
So we're going to have to cycle charge to make any real effect. The morale shock isn't large enough and uh, similar to the cavalry charges earlier, my cavalry are so weak and tired at this point that actually it's their own morale that's dropping <laughs> in these melees. So we're not actually going to have a great effect on the enemy with this tactic. On the opposite side of the town, we've actually managed to break the enemy units in this street thanks to a rear attack by the war dogs that totally put their formation into disarray and we actually defeated many units here. So now my spearmen and the penalties supporting him are going to be able to push forwards. This doesn't gain me a particular tactical advantage because we've already turned that part of the enemy's lines. So we're not really gaining a flank, but we're freeing up units to come and help in this fight, which is of course going to be handy. Now back on the other side of the town, while that was happening, my cavalry had been defeated by the enemy along with all of my light infantry, but one unit of Peltus had swung round and is now fighting with those two units, keeping them out of the rest of the fight. There you can see the light units and cavalry making their escape. So my manoeuvrable element of the army is pretty much gone at this point, so those Peltus are just going to distract the enemy while I focus here on the main engagement. And in this engagement we are starting to surround the enemy on both of their flanks, which is handy. The front line is still a grind where neither side has a particular advantage and losses are just being taken all over the place. But you can see we've got pikes outflanking the enemy on the right and we have thorax legionaries going around to outflank them on the left we saw a moment ago. So we are going to get at least a strategically good position. Now back on the other road where my peltists were going to rear attack the enemy, half the enemy army went to attack them. So now they are just fighting a holding action keeping those five or so units out of the main fight so that I can continue my plan of surrounding the enemy. So you can see the enemy's morale starting to reduce now. Some of these units have only a few of their troops left, having fought for the entire battle. So we're starting to get a chance of actually breaking through here in this entrance we've been fighting at for the entire time. You can see I even sent in the dog handlers to rear attack the unit to see if it would have any significant effect on their morale. It doesn't really, of course it's really dangerous for the dog handlers, but because they are really experienced units, their melee stats are really high, despite it actually being the dogs themselves that got most of the experience. Anyway, they get out of there. So you can see we've got routes occurring both on our side and the enemy side are about to occur. But I am now totally surrounding them. We've got legionaries right behind the enemy. And at this point, two of their units shatter, which is fantastic news. So we're now going to kill those units as they attempt to escape with my men who've got behind them. So they're definitely not going to come back. And we can now start organizing to surround the remaining units. My hoplites fighting on the front line against those two units are damaged and are losing men quite fast because of the enemy's fighting speed. Superiority, so we're going to need to help them out. The Peltus managed to defeat one of the enemy units out here on the other side of town, but the other enemy unit unfortunately is winning against them. The Peltus are basically just going to fight to the death here, or fight until they shatter, that is, killing as many of the enemy as possible. While I organised myself to try and surround the remaining enemies, Heraclades had to abandon his mission of just supporting the troops morale-wise to come out and defeat this unit outside the town because they were only routing and if they'd come back from routing behind us, that would have been rather annoying. Of course, while he's away, that means the morale of my troops is reduced and the Hoplites in particular on the verge of routing, fighting on the front against the enemy. We're starting to surround those enemy units though, it's a bit messy because the enemy formation is quite scattered and spread out. But I've also managed to get a unit of spears behind this whole position, meaning if the enemy brings troops back around from the road where they're fighting against my Peltus, they won't be able to counter-encircle my encirclement. So this is a vital move, and right away you can see it comes in useful, because the enemy immediately start attacking it with javelins and then sending in some of their melee infantry to engage them from the front. The Hoplites unfortunately did not hold out one unit routes, the other unit on the verge of routing it will go quite soon. So we're actually not really going to have the enemy surrounded because of the loss of those two units. We're sort of going to be fighting on the front and back with the flanks exposed. But we can spread our forces out and use them a bit more efficiently and try to surround them here. And of course once these uh, remaining three units are dead, that's definitely going to help set up a real formation to fight the enemy's eight or so other units. The Peltus now defeated, seeing those units coming back in. The enemy at this point still having an advantage in the fight but the fact these Peltus are out here distracting more than half of their forces from the actual engagement with my heavy units means we're starting to gain a local advantage where the heavy units are fighting. Of course that can't last forever and this battle is still yet to be decided. We'll see how it goes next time. The people of Iska, although having only been under Massalian rule a few years, had fully embraced the methods of their masters. The town itself was indistinguishable from a country town of the Massalian core. The people were both well versed in the ways of the Hoplite phalanx and the ideal of the citizen soldier, compelling them to fight against the Iceni no matter their ties of brotherhood. 
With many of the town's warriors being former servants of the Iceni's rivals, many were eager to join the battle, but almost none survived. Their contempt for the Iceni blinded them to the outright superiority of their army. After a day of bloody street battles, it was a rare thing to find a soldier who spoke the Britonic tongue.